Good morning and welcome to the April 2nd edition of Mr. Bletch Homeschool. We are so glad to have you here. We're going to start in the same way that we always start with a bit of early bed maths. Year 3, 4, 5 and 6. Your questions are here. Maths, and in maths we have looked this week at factors, squared numbers and prime numbers. But before we move on to multiples, what I want us to do is have a go at the following challenge. I have had a go at the squared numbers edition of Hit The Button and I'm about to show you the video of what I achieved. I want to see if you can do even better and if you do, please let me know your score. Here's the video, can you beat Mr. Bletcher's score? Check out this amazing squared number score on Hit The Button. Time to give it a go yourself. So, now we're going to look at multiples. If you understand factors, prime numbers, square numbers, I think you'll find multiples the simplest. Now, simply put, multiples of a number are when we count in that number. So, allow me to explain. Let's count in threes. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen. I've just counted up in threes. All of these numbers here are multiples of three. Let's try sixes. Six, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. These numbers are all multiples of six. Right, I'm gonna make it a little bit tricky now. How about multiples of 15? Can you name what the next multiples of 15 would be? And another question for you. Is 300 a multiple of 3? Is it? Isn't it? How do you know? Now, we've taken a look at multiples, and hopefully you've got an understanding of those. Now have a go at the activities that appear on screen now. Literacy now, we have looked at imperative verbs and we have looked at adverbs for making instructions better. And you did an excellent job of improving those instructions that I gave you yesterday. It was absolutely fantastic. The recipe we've been looking at this week, you have made even better, so well done. But the next feature of instructions that I want to look at is chronological order. And I've drawn a clock here as well. Maybe you can think of why I've drawn a clock. Yeah, that's why. Chronological order means time order. Instructions have to be carried out in a certain way. Think about when you're getting ready for school in the morning, okay? You need to carry out those instructions in the right order, otherwise things won't work. A bit like if you've ever brushed your teeth before drinking orange juice, and that orange juice, ugh, that tastes horrible, because certain things need to be done in the right order. Now, your activity, and I've got another one after this as well. I'm going to give you some instructions. They're going to appear on screen. 
I need you to place them and write them down in chronological order. Off you go. Great job with that. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to think about how you get ready for Mr. Blatcher Homeschool. There will be things you do each day when you've come and tuned in. There will be things you do in the right order to make sure you're ready. So what I'd like you to do at home is write out your instructions for getting ready for Mr. Blatcher Homeschool. What is it you do? But also make sure it's in chronological order. I can't wait to see these. Once they're done, make sure your grown-ups help you send them in. Off you go. Now it's time for some computing and I've got to thank one of the grown-ups out there. A big thank you to Matthew who's helped um, set up some wonderful resources that are going to help you with computing. Now we know about coding but we're going to look at a language we've not looked at much today and that's going to be the, the coding language of Python. And Python is a wonderful coding language that helps build websites and all sorts of applications. Now what I need you to do is follow the link that's in the description of this video. Then work through the different parts and the different exercises that have been set for you. Then let's see how you get on. I'd love to hear how you get on, so please let us know. Off you go in your first adventure of coding in Python. Time for reading now, and we had some absolutely fantastic suggestions about who may have been in the den before the children got there. Now we know that person, whoever it was, or group of people, haven't been there for a while, as moss was starting to grow on the tools and things that they used. Now we're going to read on. Today's questions are retrieval questions. Those are the ones where I will more than likely read out the answer during reading the text, so listen out carefully. Now, I'm actually going to give your questions now. There are the questions, so those are the things to listen out for, okay? I'm going to read halfway through chapter four. So, the river. It took some time to find leaves wide and strong enough for the roof. The first batch Fred tried tore in his hands. The second turned out to have something in them that made his skin turn red and itchy. But the third tree had fleshy leaves as long as his arm. He and Lila tore them into strips and then wove them into great squares, which they wedged in and out of the branches of the supporting trunks. Con sat on the grass outside the den, digging a hole in the ground with a twig. Fred crawled into the den and looked up. The sun no longer filtered through a thousand ant holes. The light inside was dark green an underwater sunken treasure colour. He felt an unexpected surge of triumph roar through him. It's good, he called. You can barely see the gaps. He heard Lila cheer. Fred backed out of the den and stood up too fast. Suddenly his head reeled, colours flashing in front of his eyes, his lung tied in a double knot. Are you all right? asked Lila. Fine, he said, more brusquely than he'd intended. Since his pneumonia... He hated being asked if he was all right. He tried to smile. Thanks, he added. Fred had been sent to Brazil to convalesque with a distant cousin. The cousin's idea of a good time involved more playing bridge in a dark drawing room than Fred had expected. But his father had said it was the only sensible option. I can't be at home to look after you, he'd said. The firm needs me. I can look after myself, Fred wheezed. It's not possible, his father said gruffly. He had worked longer and longer hours each year, ever since Fred could remember. Fred could not remember his mother's face, except when he was asleep. He'd never seen his father dressed in anything other than a suit, and over time the suit seemed to have seeped into his father's skin. His voice practically wore a tie. You treat me like a baby, Fred had said. Nonsense, his father replied. Come on, you're a sensible boy. Fred's boarding school report always contained the word sensible, an unobtrusive presence in the classroom. Sometimes, when they could clearly think of nothing else that distinguished him from his classmates, they added increasingly tall. Fred knew he was none of those things, or rather, he was tall. Nobody would have argued about that. He grew out of his clothes so fast that his ankles were constantly cold. But he was not 
unobtrusive inside, nor was he sensible. Inside, Fred was hunger and hope and wire. It was just that that there had never yet been a chance to prove it. His father always insisted so unswervingly on clean shoes and unrebellious eyebrows, but Fred's mind was quick with sharp edges. He wanted more from the world that he had not yet given. Now he tried to grin at Lila. I'm just dehydrated. We need to find something to drink, he said. You can live for a long time without eating. No, you absolutely can't, said Max indignantly. But you can't live for long without water. Do you think we can drink from the... Lila hesitated, searching for the words. Tiny cesspool. Fred looked across at the puddle of water. We could, but I don't think we'd live very long if we did. But we're near the river. We must be, he said. It was on our left when we crashed, said Lila eagerly. Which direction did we run, said Con. Well, the sun rises in the east, so facing this way, left is northeast, said Fred. How does that help if we don't know which direction we ran, snapped Con. She was pale, and there were circles under her eyes, as if someone had pressed a paint-smeared thumb to her face. It doesn't much, admitted Fred, but northeast of here was England. The thump in his chest slowed a little. North East led to his bedroom at home, his bookcase, his cricket bat propped up against the wall. It led to his father. Con squared her shoulders as if readying to fight. Are we just going to guess then? I heard, Fred said, that you can follow ants and they'll take you to water. Ants, said Con. We're going to take directions from ants. Right, we're going to stop there. Your questions are going to appear again to remind you. Remember the retrieval. So if you need to listen again, listen out for the answers this time. There won't be any clues. The answers will be there for you to hear. Have a go. Word of the day. Diminish. What is the definition? Can you use the word in a sentence? The value of Fred's car diminished over time.